what you said in this wonderful book, Har <laughs> Harsh Realities, which I spent the weekend reading, and it's such a wonderfully written, written book. My compliments to you. But, you know, you in that book, too, you mentioned this fact thank that you, uh, you that. tried to get into business schools, but you failed to get, uh, uh, but you failed to get admission out there. And in the book, you say that it's a, it's a blessing in disguise that you did not get in. <laughs> why did you say that? Why do you say that? You are absolutely right. I tried getting into a business school in India. I wanted to go abroad but my father said no and my father was wise enough not to allow me to go abroad because I would have come back and joined the family business in a, and I would have been very, very frustrated because it was a typically family managed business. There were no systems, there were no professionals. So the fact that I had to learn everything from the bottom, uh, I think that really helped me and you know if I had come back. Uh, after doing my MBA, I would have been much more frustrated uh, and not gone through the learning curve which I did uh, uh, because I was not educated uh, in terms of postgraduate uh, MBA qualification. Uh, so I, I think it's, it's worked out well in my favor. I don't know why my father said no. Maybe he thought I'll never come back. Maybe he thought I'll get married to somebody else and <laughs> stay there. I don't have any idea. But mm -hmm. you know, those days we were far more obedient as kids and I, I couldn't <laughs> say no to my father. Then, I mean, if you ask me today, my children, if they, if I say no, they will just rebel and, you know, do things which they want to do it on their own. But those days, it was very different. Yet, uh, when you went about setting up the company from scratch, uh, Barico, uh, the, the company that you immersed yourself in, you actually sought out people with exactly that pedigree, all those IIT, IIM graduates, and you recount all of that in your book one by one. All of them came from the best business schools and they had very good pedigree in terms of the companies they worked for. So what you did not have yourself, but you sought out in the kind of people that you populated your company with. Why? So you're absolutely right, you know, because I, when I started, I started learning things by referring to uh, some of my friends, uh, talking to some consultants, uh, highly, shall I say, qualified individuals who worked in very good organizations and that experience of interacting with thought leaders, with very good quality professionals really influenced me a lot in my formative years. So I was absolutely clear that if I had to run an FMCG business, I have to have the best quality talent, best quality in terms of qualifications, attitude and also overall performance. So uh, I think that uh, that belief I developed over a period of few years in my formative years in terms of investing in talent and I think that has played a very very important role in the success of Marico and I always looked at individuals who were better than me because uh, I was not a functional expert and you know I had to recruit the best quality marketing professional, I had to recruit the best quality sales professional and if they have already worked in this, in this sector uh, then I mean they will bring their experience and they will be able to add value. And uh, I think many entrepreneurs think that they know it all. And that has been the biggest, I would say, uh, mistake they make. They don't try to recruit somebody who is better than me, themselves. And I had a different viewpoint that I have to recruit better than what I am in that particular functional area. And that person should be better than me so that I am able to empower that individual and also delegate to them. Uh, and not abdicating my responsibility. I am equally responsible for delegating. But uh, it's easy to empower them because they are far more capable than, than yourself.